Welcome back. Well, one of the downsides of spring besides allergies in this region, tax season is now upon us. To tell us what's new in 2015 and to share the top three tax breaks that small businesses often overlook, Kate Bonner, she's back on the show, Senior Manager of Federal Public Policy at NFIB, the National Federation of Independent Business. Kate, thanks so much for joining us. You've got lots of information on the NFIB website, yes. so we're not going to get into the weeds, so to speak, sure. of the spring cleaning, <laughs> uh, but we're going to hit on some things both for 2015 and then what people overlook. So let's start with what's new in 2015. Number one, there are expired tax extenders that businesses need to be aware of. Yep, so Congress actually addressed about 50 tax extenders before they left town in 2014. So those are all retroactive. So for filing your taxes this year, you're good in 2014. What's left up in the air is whether those extenders are going to be made permanent, extended again this year. We have yet to see the House has voted on one, a very important uh, one. Okay, one of these days I'm going to have you on the show when we're going to get to say Congress got everything done no. and they've set tax policy Not for the next five soon. years so the businesses can plan. Does it have a nice ring to it? It does have a nice Not ring to it. Not going to happen. So let's happen. get on to number two, the okay. employer mandate. Where are we there? So went into effect this year for um, employers who have 100 or more full-time equivalent employees. Important to know, full-time is defined as 30 hours a week under the law. Next year in 2016, it will go into effect with folks with more than 50 employees. So very important for planning purposes. If you're thinking of expanding your businesses, adding employees, you need to know whether you're subject to the employer mandate or not. And again, 30 hours or more? 30 hours or more. Okay, number three, the new 401k plan limits. Talk about that. Yep, up, went, went up just a bit for uh, next year. Uh, 18000 for the employer contribution to a 401k. So combined with your employee employer contribution, it's up to 53000 Slightly up from 2014. If the employer is maxing out. Now, come if on, the employer employers, you can do this. Max out. It's retirement. It is a great benefit about. for employers and employees. Employers need to know about that one. Make that case. Why is it such a great benefit for Well, them? it adds up to the bigger tax write-off for the employer and the employee gets to save more money for their retirement. Thank you. The win-win. We love win -win. it. Win-win. Number four, there is some corporate tax reform afoot. Not much. Not the over overhaul they wanted, but it's there. There is the idea of corporate only tax <laughs> reform, which uh, small businesses will just say the only way to get them at the table for uh, comprehensive tax reform is to include the individual income tax rates. Over 75% of small businesses are structured as pass-through entities. That means they're paying their taxes at the individual income rate, not the corporate rate. So it's very important that Congress address both We'll see if Congress it actually happens. Congress knows that, right? I mean, Congress it's knows that. One, small business 101, they know that. They do. Why do small businesses have to keep reminding them of that? I, that's a good question. I, I mean, they, that's your job, yes, and it yes. must be so frustrating. Well, I will say, if Congress tries to move ahead with corporate only, small businesses will fight them tooth and nail on Get that. Get the pitchforks. We're ready. We will. We'll be, we'll be right behind you, we, Kate. Okay, you can take great, the lead. Right behind us. <laughs> okay. But there's some missed opportunities that uh, even smart small businesses uh, miss out on when sure. they're uh, filing taxes and paying too much. Give us some of those. So first is the um, home office deduction. That's a scary one. It is a scary one. So the IRS did make a standardized home office deduction, but what's included in the home office deduction is if you work from home, say you drive to an employee meeting or related business meeting, that trip is tax deductible. So when you're expensing your car mileage, it's important to remember that. So that, is that, that adds up. And it adds up. And so it re that return trip back to your home office is also tax deductible. It can add up to 40% more savings on your tax deduction for your car. I think you're so, people are so often told don't take too much right. when you're counting a home office that they don't take enough. Right. So that's a good one. Right. Uh, number two, meals and entertainment. Meals and entertainment. You say there's some wiggle room there that people aren't fully taking advantage of. As long as it's a legitimate business discussion over either a meal or some sort of entertainment function, 50% of that expense is tax deductible. Just keep your records, keep, keep your receipts. Very important, Quick very important. note to yourself to remind you so that if you ever have to explain it, you can tell Write them everything what down. topic. You, Write not everything, everything you don't have to have a minute by minute, as you all note, but you remember the topic. You do, yes, absolutely. Travel, travel can be uh, a tax saving. Travel also, so if you know it's an expressed business trip, easy. But if you're on vacation and you actually end up working half of the day or more, so that's four or more hours, you can deduct that travel. And it's a 100% tax deduction for business travel. And people don't realize that. And let's face it, everyone's sitting at the swimming pool with a laptop. We don't get vacations anymore. Right. I say if the law allows it, right. use it. Your kids are paying the price when you're not going down the water slide with them. And you I might will, as well. I will add to that for small business owners, they are never on vacation. Never. They're always working. So this My, is a very important one for small business owners to pay attention exactly. to. Exactly. OK, last one, corporation at C Corp versus S Corp. Just sure. give us the highlight. The rest will be on our website. Sure. So uh, C Corp 
C-Corp, S-Corp, the easy one is that there's a double tax for C-Corp. So if you don't need to be a C-Corp in your small business, definitely talk to, talk to your tax preparer, to your uh, tax attorney, and make sure you don't need to be a C-Corp, and then you can start the transition to a pass-through. S-Corps, especially, only some of their business income, those earnings, are subject to the self-employment tax. If you're structured as a sole proprietorship or a partnership, you're paying 100% tax on those earnings. Ouch. Kate Bonner, we learned so much when you're here. Thanks for joining Thanks us. Thanks for having me. Pretty Easter colors. Yes, happy Easter. Happy Easter. Thank you.